What's going on, everybody? This is the Ground Up Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron, and this is... You should rock. And this is episode 29. All right, guys. I want you to listen, learn, and be inspired. Today, we're bringing you a creative and a businessman. Wounds. Wounds of Wounds Tattoos, formerly known as Black Chris. Wounds is a tattoo and music artist. Welcome, Wounds. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I am so excited to have you on the podcast. I've been following you on, on your platforms, and you Appreciate are, it. yeah, you are, you entertain me. Right, you really right. do. <laughs> well, you know, some people put here for the entertainment, so that's what I'm here to do. Make people smile and entertain some motherfuckers. Now, well, we love it. We love it. I love your energy. And I was like, we got to get him on the podcast. Right. Yeah. I was yeah. definitely excited. So it took me so long to get it together. I'd be just like, look, life, <laughs> life. So give us a little background. Tell us, you know, where you're from. Are you Richmond native? Yeah, I'm from, I'm from here. I'm from the West End area, like Bird Park area, kind of. So I went to TJ, uh, Thomas Jefferson High School and stuff like that. Yeah, we were, graduated we were rivals, from there. We were rivals, I understand. <laughs> where you went? Where yeah. you went? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that's like, that's like uh, the Redskins in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> when you were growing up, what was your dream? Were you always a creative? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I feel like know, there's a story yeah, behind that. Yeah, that's why I say everybody has their story. So, you know, I came into drawing probably like more uh aware of it in high school. Because mm-hmm. in high school when I started, like I would be in the class and teachers just had me doing, you know, com- competition stuff. Oh wow. Like, if I if I could find y'all my report card, I got all else in art. All else. Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> so the art came running in, and then people, you know, of course, back in that time, everybody was doing shoes and the coats and the airbrushing and this and that and the third. So I was one of them dudes, you know, I made a way through that, but I was just in the other side of things too. So, you know, I, I was more pulled that way. Okay. Well, what do you mean by the other side of things? Let's keep it real on the Ground Up podcast. Selling drugs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if that's what it is, that's what it is. Right, that's what it is. And then, like, my neighborhood, it was just a neighborhood. You know, like, I told you, I'm, I'm in Bird Park. Right. But in the 80s, it was totally different. You know I know, because I mean? the vision I'm having of ground, of Bird Park, I have to flash back to when I was young. Because right now, no, yeah. everybody's like, oh, that's when, nice. Bird Park yeah, is beautiful. Everybody used to be out Bird Park on Sunday right. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I said, we was, I was probably, like, you know, early teens and late teens for that time. You know what I mean? But Right. And all of that type of stuff that was going on. Yeah, you know, I want to be flashy too. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. So do you feel like, you know, when you were selling drugs, was it a, was it a, I mean, I, I guess it is a choice, but do you feel like you were in a situation where you just had to? No, nah, shit, I thought that shit was a real job. Oh. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's where the business mindset, the businessman can't, can, you know, can't grow. Yeah. And I say that's part, you know, what what instilled that into me now and stuff like that. But yeah, I always thought that shit was a job for real. Like, it's a product and you buying and selling the product. Me true. <laughs> Facts. I mean, so you go to the grocery store, you buying and selling the product. Why the fuck not here? Somebody want it and there's a demand. Let's feel the demand. So what led you to leaving that behind and getting into entrepreneurship what, what created that drive to want to change that lifestyle um well I did do some time in prison and stuff like that but then when I came home it was like I couldn't work for nobody because uh as I call it I don't play well with others <laughs> <laughs> so in a nine to five situation that's not my character and I don't believe in people talking down to me so I'm too much of an alpha male, so that's definitely not going to happen. I've proven that many times, so I can't work with people that, you know, this is not even your fucking business, like, and right, you're right. And like, you know what I mean? Like, come on now. I can, do I can definitely understand you on that one. <laughs> Let me tell you, Aaron has told me some stories. I've never been disrespected <laughs> in the workplace like that, but I feel like Black males see, yeah. have a whole different situation. Oh, yeah, that's why I would say, yeah, see, y'all kind of get pampered because, but y'all still get treated bad, but us, Oh, no, nah. it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. And I'm going to show you how terrible it can be. 
Mm. So you come home, you realize that this regular nine to five doesn't work for you. What happened next? Did you dig into that childhood when you used to, you know, when you used to uh, draw like in, in high school, did you, that creative side came out of you? What led to it? Well, no. <laughs> so uh, there's other detours, but good ones too. But out of that, I was just like, okay, I didn't do this time, but now what I'm going to do, I don't want to work for nobody. But then just at that moment, uh, my homie that I still work with today came and kind of saved me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we started working out Kings and Million together and what uh, brought the artwork really full force is that because at Kings and Million, he, we was doing henna tattooing. Oh, you know? really? Okay, okay. So, you know, being able to start redrawing on people and stuff like yeah. that, you know what I mean? Kind of like brought that back, yeah. And then what led to turn it into a business? Uh, well, that part of it, like I say, I had worked for Kings of Million, well, at that particular henna stand for like two years. So that was like uh, 05, 06, you know what I mean? And then I, cause I started tattooing in February of 06. So coming to that point, I was just like, yo, what I'm gonna do? Cause like I had, I had to get let go of that job because they made changes and they won't take them face, you know, people with uh, cases anymore, you know what I mean? Gotcha. So I got two felonies, you know what I mean? One fed and one state. So, you know, I had to go. So I was like, what am I going to do? And then just so whole, my cousin, he was like, yo, because I was drawing a picture, actually the anthrax, there was a whole lot going on. <laughs> like, okay. The anthrax break going it down. on. Yeah, break it down <laughs> for me. Look, you got to rush through this. I want to know your story wounds for real. Oh, we, I got a whole lot, yeah. So... <laughs> The anthrax going on, somebody from D.C. called me and was like, they need portraits of these people that passed. So I'm doing that. And my cousin said, won't you tattoo? I cussed him the fuck. I was like, nigga, no, I'm not doing that. Like skin and paper, two different things. Three months later, I'm doing it. <laughs> so oh, wow. yeah. so oh, it man. sounds like you, you had uh, people around you who were pushing you towards it. Yeah, I call them my muse. Them my, them yeah. my daughter, they're my muse, yeah, because they help me. Yeah, you know what I mean? So now I'm helping everybody else now. <laughs> Did you ever yeah. foresee that you would be doing something that you enjoy and love and making money from it? Not till I got into it, you know what I mean? Because, like, starting out as a tattoo artist is hard because people really don't trust you, but then you right. got some people that just don't give a fuck, you know what right, I mean? Right, 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 right. So, it was, it was trying to figure out where I wanted to be in those situations. Then going to like actual shops and stuff like that, being a black man mm -hmm. and looking these people in the face with an awesome portfolio and telling me, nah, we ain't doing, we ain't doing it. We ain't, you know what I mean? That old type of shunning away shit. Yeah. Right. So then I started connecting with the underground people and seeing how they operated. Then I was like, I fuck with that, but I don't at the same time. So I wanted to bridge both gaps to where when you come to me, you get the atmosphere, you get the great price, the great work and everything in one, you know what I mean? So yeah. you ain't got to worry about nothing, you know what I mean? Your own personal time, all that stuff. Nice. So that's why they love me. <laughs> <laughs> they love some wounds, huh? Yeah. All right, well, so last night, actually, this is the second time I watched it. I watched the Quarter Bird music video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught a bird. Baby. Yeah, the video is dope. You're right. Whoever, I don't know who your videographer oh, was. That, that's my home at Davos Productions, baby. Shout out to well, Davos. Yeah, shout out to them. Yes. But what I want to talk about is I felt like I learned a lot about you from the lyrics in that song. You're yeah, telling a lot a of people story. say it that too. Yeah, yo, you're telling a story. Like, you're yeah. talking about, I mean, you're talking about deep stuff. You're talking about loss. You're talking yeah. about jail time. You're talking about how your your mental. You know, tell me what it took to to be vulnerable and write those words. Was it therapeutic? Like, tell me about that process. So writing that song really came from me thinking about the time I was going to sell somebody a quarter bird. That's why it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So that's why at the end of all this that I'm thinking about, it's like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to fucking be doing this shit. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. I got fucking four and a half ounces of cocaine on me. You know what I mean? Ooh. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what you mean, but I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
all of that stuff, like I say, from the beginning to, to this point, is just like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, because I'm the Yoda of my crew. If y'all see my background, like, he up there, that's me. So it's kind of like this switch click. I came into my stuff and I understood what was going on. Like, people die every day. Yes. You mourn them and you have emotions for that person. And, you know, you got to express that, you know, never hold that in. Express that, get that out of the way, and then move on. And see, I I figured out how to move on through a whole lot of stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, in this life, it just made me a chameleon, what I call myself, because I'm able to adapt to any situation. You know what I mean? And make it happen. Yeah, I feel you. So do you feel like um, when you put that song out there, like, was that therapeutic? Um, me, me doing music therapeutic anyway. What I really like about it is, like, it's the truth. You know what I mean? Everybody spit their truth. And so within my circle, when they hear this, you know, it's like testimony because they know what it is, you know what I mean? Because they've been with me since day one, since the days we didn't got robbed, all kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Well, let me ask you this. So you said you're the Buddha of your circle. and the Yoda. 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 <laughs> let me correct it, the Yoda of your circle. But to me, that means um, you're a leader, right? So Definitely. since you changed your lifestyle, have you brought others with you? Oh, my whole crew with me. Nice. Yeah, it's it's like my whole crew. We've been together. Let's see, maybe like thirty, almost thirty plus years. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these are my boys since we've been going to the boys club on Robinson Street. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. So I ain't 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 nobody's added. Nobody's changed. Nobody's nothing. I love it. I love it. So when you started music, when did you start the whole music thing? Uh, <laughs> so one of my circle boys, we, we, when we had like first kind of met up him and another dude was doing music. So we used to get up and hot box the car, smoke and shit. <laughs> as you know, stuff coming on the radio, they up there rapping. I'm like, yo, what is y'all doing? You know what I mean? And being that I was in, you know, in that life kind of heavy, I knew people. So they was like, yeah, we were trying to get with such and such. And, he, you know, he ain't fucking with us. And I was like, oh, all right. right so right. I told them, you know, like, no, give me 30 days. So in 30 days, I went and copped a house and bought studio equipment for them. You know what I mean? Okay. And it started from there. And then, like, just listening to them, it was just like, yo, I want to rap too, yo. <laughs> <laughs> like, put me on something, you know what I mean? Right. Write something for me. So what unlocked it for me was one of one of my homies was like, yo, you ain't shit the way you is, my nigga. Just write about pieces of your life. I was like, yo, there it is. So I mean, that's dope, man. You went, you went and, and bought a studio and, and put it together yourself. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Like I'm cool, a, I I I make it happen. <laughs> what's up man like for real so do you think that's what's helping you in entrepreneurship because I mean you said basically you got out of jail and you did not want to work for anybody but there's so many people out there that don't want to work for anybody but but feel like they have to what is it about okay, okay, yeah. that made I, a way I, uh, not to talk ill about it but I feel like some of these people scared to be who they need to be oh okay like like, for instance, y'all, you know, this is what y'all are doing. But, like, if that 95 had you in them cuffs, like, you wouldn't be doing this. You know what I mean? Like, that's a whole nother story. You, you're not scared to be who you want to be. Like, there's so many talented people out here, and they just let life, you know, take them down. Because it's sad to say you got to have a job, go to college, and all that. No, you don't, bitch. All you got to do is learn how to read and write and add some fucking numbers. Because I'm not doing geometry right now. No trigonometry. <laughs> but none of that shit. Oh, my God. I love it. I mean, unless, I was, <laughs> unless I was in that field, you know what I mean? Right. Then that's exactly. fine. But I don't need that shit. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Just hand me them papers and I, I, I can read them. And if I don't, somebody in my circle going to take care of it. That's it's not right. falling to that. I love it. I love that, man. That's what's up, man. So you have a a large social media following. Do you just enjoy sharing your life or is that also a marketing or helps, you know, a, a strategy? Oh yeah, it's it's a ploy because people knows it. So. I love it. It's so true though. <laughs> and, it's not, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. You just know it's it. not a bad so, thing. No. But, 
But that's why these fucking soap operas on Channel 6 and 8 still come on at 1 o'clock. Because these people is so nosy. They just want to see what somebody else's life is like. You know what I mean? Right. Right. No, but I love that you share it. Because look, I'm one of them nosy people. So... <laughs> Right. We I'd want to like, see some shit. I'd be like, look so, at Wounds up doing his wake right. and cake. I'd be like, good morning, <laughs> Wounds. Good morning. People want to see some shit. So I'm going to show you a little something. <laughs> Has that helped you helped you with the business? Um, I See, my business, it, it was like, like I say, okay, before the tattooing, I was already drawing and stuff. So people already knew my skill set. So okay. then when this came and the demeanor of me all my people was just like, here you go. Just right. Here you go. <laughs> do what you want to do. So it wasn't hard for me to take off. It was just me being persistent and diligent and consistent about it. You know what I mean? Right. I feel yeah. you. Consistency is everything. Oh, yeah. Definitely that. Because people fall off all the time. You know what I mean? I made a vow not to do none of that ever again. I'm going to ask you, what does keep you motivated? Because when you are an entrepreneur, when you're responsible for making, you know, your own money, it has to be a level of motivation that keeps you going, other than just having to pay the bills, right? Yeah. Um, well, like I say, these past few years, for real, I've been lazy. I've just been figuring out my finances. Right. And I just wake up and get on the phone, like, okay, I'll tattoo you today. <laughs> you know what, what? I mean? <laughs> so, he said, I'm living, sorry man. people sorry people i know y'all be trying to get me but i'm lazy as fuck i ain't gonna lie all right tell me tell me what is day-to-day -day like how many tattoos are you doing today or how often how many days a week are you working okay if i work no uh, no okay let's 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 do a time frame okay In the give it to me because what's this 2020 oh so this february so damn yeah, you don't what know the date wounds <laughs> We are February. Um, it's 2021. So that makes 15 years, right? Since 06. Oh, yeah. oh wow. So you wait, you saying you've been you've been doing this since for 15 years? Yeah. To oh. this month. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, 15 hey, years. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Aaron, do the thing. Aaron, hold do on, the thing. On. There we go. Okay, so that changes <laughs> things for me a little bit. So you're saying you're lazy, but you obviously have not always been lazy. Correct. So, All right, talk, talk to me. Talk to me about actually <laughs> getting into the grind of running this business and what it was like, the struggles or the, the success. Like, talk to me about it. Being the way that I am very persistent and I saw what the potential of it was, it was like me selling drugs all over again. Mm. Oh, so you found you found a a, a parallel for you. You indeed. already know, baby. Yes, indeed. Right, right. And to be able to make it every day in hand and however, you know what I mean? So right. it's just like hustling again for me, you know what I mean? Okay. So, so in the beginning, like I was about to get to your your uh question. In the beginning, I went hard, meaning Right now, it is 626. I might got three people waiting, another two sitting over there, and another three over here. You know what I mean? Like, going all night from, like, 8 in the morning to maybe 3 in the morning. You know what I mean? Lay down for a minute, do the same thing again. And I did that for about five, six years. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. And that's how I built myself up. You know what I mean? And so I would work monday through friday saturday and sunday go do tattoo parties in different states this that oh, and the wow. third you know what I mean? so because in my drug dealing time i had a whole lot of connections so it's like now like like not too long ago i called my boy in atlanta like coming down i can go i can go this place or that place you know what i mean and do what i want to do i got burnt out because i was tired of doing i was just gonna <laughs> ask you like did you get burnt out because i mean i get it in the beginning when you start something you gotta go hard you gotta make it work right you said what five, and it was, and it was five years <laughs> and it was fun and then like i said it started just getting uh the same thing you know everybody just want a rose or a butterfly and i'm like <laughs> excuse my language but bitch please <laughs> Is okay. does does anybody have any creative anything? You know what I mean. So okay. it's just like came to a whole lot of where you the artist. Why don't you just put some moment? Okay, I'm gonna put a pile of shit and some oh. glasses. <laughs> I like I would literally say that to them and be like, "Stop playing wounds." I'm like, "I'm not. You're not giving me no direction." Because the first thing is it's permanent, and I really, you know, really am about that. And it's on your fucking body. 
I, I ain't got the word of shit. So that's you. Yeah. So tell me something. I don't know you. And see, then when I tell people about like my tattoos and stuff, I be breaking them all to tears because then they understand. They have stories you know, behind them. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. So I get it. Great. So you've been working, you've been doing this for a while. This is nothing new to you. So right <laughs> now you're just slowing down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. People think I'm retired. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold up. <laughs> oh my gosh you two people you're laughing <laughs> all right is there a creative process that you have when it comes to your music and your art yes okay shout out to my little cousin no beats that's who primarily is my beat mate he's my blood cousin and i raised him with my son so i used to watch them when they were little and now he's grown and making my beats now <laughs> Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah, yes, it is. So yeah, I cuss his ass out because what, what? That's not what I thought you were gonna oh, say man. next. You started with shout out to him. Right. I love him. He know I love him, but I cuss him off. He walked through the door right here in front of y'all. So when I got into tattoo, I was like, oh, I still love music. I could do tattoo music. So that's where, you know, if you heard any of that, that's where that come from. And just like me just rapping about different experiences I'm going through as the artist with these people, you know what I mean? Right. right. So I got like, you know, like like two, three albums of that stuff. And then, so it was so commercial, it was great. And that helped pump me and then it kept me in my flow. Right. So that kind of took me away from the drug mentality of things, you know what I mean? So I wasn't rapping about that or thinking about that to make music, you know what I mean? Exactly. And he fucking comes and I cussed his ass out. And I'm like, Lo, why the fuck are you making these type of beats? And now I'm thinking about <laughs> shit from then that I didn't want to do. And then Black Chris comes out and here we are. <laughs> so wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell me about Black Chris. You, when I introduced you based on what you, how you wanted me to introduce you, you tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> like like the artist known as Prince. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you wanted to stay formally known as Black Chris. Who is Black Chris? He did, but <laughs> did. I don't know. See, it be it was that the drug dealer side of you? Yeah. I got you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, well, okay, let's have a funeral for Black Chris. You got something for that, Aaron? No. <laughs> Rest in peace. Hail Rest Mary. Peace Hail Mary. Hail kids. Mary. Right. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. No, but I, I, I fuck, I fucked with wounds. I understand Black Chris. Yeah, see, there you go. You got me cussing. My mama told me to stop cussing on the podcast. <laughs> I can't do that again. And see, I've been, I've been with an aunt that helped raise me, and that's all she did was cuss. So I, don't, it's like, and it's just a, you that's know, that's what my dad talking. was. He, he cussed for love. <laughs> right. Me. Yeah. It ain't out of disrespect to none, you know. Fuck y'all. <laughs> so um, let me get back to your story. Let me get back to your story. Tell me, tell me though, what how would you like if you look over the last 15 years since you started doing this, since you started being a tattoo artist, working for yourself, since you started creating music, how do you reflect on that time? Like when you look back and you think about where you are today, what is your give me a synopsis? Like, how do you feel about everything? I am extremely elated to be sitting right here talking to y'all, being able to wake up in the morning. Cause, you know, I've had, you know, many death experiences, you know what I mean? Then going through the heart surgery thing, I had a, a dad on the table then. So it's a whole lot. <laughs> so being able to sit here and just roll up again and be able to do the music again and, you know, tattoo and stuff is like, awesomest thing right now you know what i mean mm -hmm. and be able to just see my kids of course you know what i mean stuff like that it's just i can crazy. imagine that i don't know how long you were you know in in prison but i can imagine just four years four years i mean four years is four years yeah i mean and, I, and, but I I, I I had to do it in six different institutions ooh. oh man yeah. <laughs> yeah, well shit so. at least you never got comfortable <laughs> you know you never got comfortable you you knew you you were gonna come home eventually right well, see, it wasn't even that. It's just because you're in prison, right? Where else they gonna take you? So I did what I wanted to do. Right, I understand. You did what you had to do to to get through it. No, I did what I wanted to do. 
So I'm trying, I might to, have, <laughs> I'm trying to so, bring it up a little bit. Wounds is like, nope, so, nope, you know, don't make it pretty. Don't make it pretty. <laughs> nah, so, you know, so I have been transferred, you know, through this. And then some, you know, a couple of my cases have transferred me to different places and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's crazy. But what I'm saying, what, what, I, what, what I started off with saying is that I can imagine that when you wake up every day, you said how it feels good to wake up every day, but to wake up every day in your own and being oh, free. Yes. Oh, yes. And so that that's, is, the type, that that's the type of gratitude that we we all take for granted who's never had to wake up somewhere else where we don't want to be. Right. Right. And that's why I understand like all of that because I didn't, it seems like I'd have been in most of almost every situation that, you know, a man, a black man could possibly be in. You know what I mean? Right. And to have this opportunity to be able to do this and then the way that I am spread it back like I want to is just crazy, baby. Great. Mm, I love it. Tell me about that though. You said spread it back. Do you mean how you brought along like your crew with you? Yeah, because like my crew, like if you just hear some of my music, most of like the background and stuff is all of them. Like we do nothing yeah. from the outside. Like we have my sisters that sing, my brothers that sing, some of them rap. They also make the music. Like I have a whole collective, you know what I mean? So That's it's beautiful. Crazy. Definitely. And then it's just coming out so well now, you know, being them older, but it's just like I'm about to bring that trap therapy back. You understand what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I, I believe most people who are, I believe most people, I'm going to say, I, use, I usually say most entrepreneurs, but I believe at this point where we are today, most people think about their legacy. How do you want to be remembered? Like money. Ooh, okay. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. So <laughs> every day we still got Benjamin, Franklin, all them in our pocket, we still, that's how they be remembered. So I'm going to be remembered like money because I'm on your skin forever till you turn to dust. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Truth. And I got kids and all of me. Do, do you feel like doing what you want to do to make money is leaving an impression on them? Do they understand? Do they understand? All six of my kids hustle. Okay. Mm. My oldest son has his own carpentry business. Yes. My daughter has her own makeup business. My other son, he's in school at Norfolk State. My other daughter is taking my marine biology and ODU. Wow. My other son, oh, do I got his stuff in here? Yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, show us. No, and, then my, and then my other son, he draws too. So he oh painted my this. Goodness. Oh, that's sick. I his love art, it. Yeah, his artwork is crazy. And then my other daughter, she started her own little lip gloss business. So. Okay, so you were raising little black, you got little, some black excellence over there going. That's, what's That's up, right. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I absolutely love it. Because they're going to take care of me in a few years. I ain't doing nothing. Hey, it's like hey. <laughs> That's how I feel about KJ. I'm, I'm putting him on. I mean, he young right now, but when I when he get up there, he going to have his own. He going he gonna to be like, yeah, I got you, Pops. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then I said, like, my circle, we, you know, we have to send the kids to school and boy, it's COVID right now, but, you know, in the typical sense, but, you know, my circle, we teach our kids and we bring them around and, like, talk to them like they're little niggas, like, keep it real with them so they understand, like, you got to be both of them people, you know what I mean? Right. Play the rules here and then know how to maneuver here. <sighs> it's facts. Yeah, it's facts. Um... Wins, what's the number one takeaway you want the listeners to take from your journey? Please be yourself. I was just about to say, I would say do what you <laughs> want, y'all. <laughs> All right. Just please be yourself. I wish some of these talented people, like, we could take over these talented people come out, man. What do you think it is? The fear? Oh, yeah. So, and, 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 and my, my theory, for real, for real, is Black people, since... Okay, for one, we have to use slavery, but Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, two prominent Black men, regardless of what was going on, but they were speakers, and people followed them as if they were gods, I would say. I'm just using that word. But when you take them two off the pedestal, they dumbed us down. So that was in the 50s and 60s, and then in the 70s, you give us Heron, word. So nobody has no fight in them no more to me, you know what I mean? I I understand. Look, trust me. I I I can go through that that same 
whole thing with you because I'm 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 with that. I I study all that stuff. I tell her about all that stuff all the time. Yeah. So I feel you on then, that. One. Then, then, uh, everybody didn't want to, you know. Then they got that war going on. Then here come the '80s, and now here come crack yep. to bring it down even more. You know what I mean? So, so you feel uh, like drugs? I mean, I. I I, mean, I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to get your <laughs> perspective. But do you feel like drugs has taken away from our community, from the black community? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and I and it was the, you know, the people's plan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this whole this whole 50 states ain't nothing but a project. You know what I mean? We're going to see what we can do over here. See what we can do over here. They ain't doing nothing but playing with us. You know what I mean? So right. I said, okay. If y'all want to play the Matrix, I'm going to take the green pill instead of the blue and red, and I'm going to be in both of these bitches. Okay. You feel good that you're on the other side of that, meaning, like, you're not selling anymore, you're an owner now, you're a businessman? Oh, yeah, because I could just walk out. I ain't got to worry about nothing, you know what I mean? Like, real quick, you know what I mean? And then, like, you know, there's reality. Somebody might want feel like want to rob you this and third, but I, I ain't. I've been through so much. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Like, if it's that time for that to happen, it's that time. But my energy is too strong for it to even bring that in my radius to happen. You know what I mean? Right, right, too. right. Wounds, you are a unique, <laughs> unique, unique, beautiful person. Thank you. Thank you. You ready for the game? Let's play a game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to play Would You Rather This or That. Would you rather win $1 million or earn $1 million? Damn. I know, right? Because I'm lazy, so I think I want to win it. <laughs> look, 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 Aaron said earn, y'all. I said win. Next one. Taco Tuesday or Wing Wednesday? Ah, taco. Okay, oh, okay. okay, no, but all right, let's move on. Because I, I just went last night and ate like 11 of them. But wings, <laughs> wings are where it's at. But anyway, would you rather have a reality TV show or write an autobiography? The autobiography. Yeah, okay, I yeah. can see that with you, yep. All right, this or that, chips on a deli sandwich or fries on a burger? Damn. <laughs> Chips. And yes, yes yay! <laughs> chips. All right. Wounds, how can listeners reach you? Say they want a tattoo or say they want some inspiration. Oh, 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 oh. I know you're doing your spiel. Let's stop that. Ain't no more tattooing. Don't oh. call me for that. Don't call me for that shit, y'all. We're not doing that. Just call me and say hello. Say you got some chips and a sandwich for me or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, guys, I think y'all should just go follow yeah. Wounds on Instagram. <laughs> and YouTube, and go check out Quarter Bird video. Oh, and I got two more videos about to come. They being done both right now. So Beautiful. we just finished shooting them. One called Drugs. See, that's Black Chris again. Why would you do that? Look, look, Black Chris is dead. Why would, why would he keep naming songs of these type of things? I just don't understand. I have to go have a talk with him. I need you to go do a tattoo and come back to Wounds. See, now you want me to work. I don't know if I yep, like yep, y'all or not. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Wounds, for being on the podcast. You are a star, and I love... Appreciate it, and thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, thank I love this interview. It was so much fun. <laughs>